Hey there, this is Tiff here. Here I am at Food Bank in New South Wales ACT. It's actually the big warehouse here is actually in Glendenning out in Western Sydney. And I've come to actually have a chat with Jerry Anderson, the CEO of Food Bank New South Wales and ACT, because there's a lot of people out there that actually don't know what Food Bank is or what they do. And some people have never heard of Food Bank. So what I wanted to do today is I wanted to share with you what Food Bank does, how they help people, help those in need, and uh, we'll have a chat with uh, you know Jerry Anderson. So make sure you just don't go anywhere and, and have a listen to what Jerry has to say. Hi there, this is Tiff here, and I'm with Jerry Anderson, the CEO of Food Bank New South Wales and ACT. So Jerry, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Tiff. It's a pleasure. I just want to ask you some questions, Jerry, if that's okay, because what I'm finding is a lot of people actually still don't know about Food Bank, and could you share with the person that's actually going to be watching us today yeah, look, what, what Food Bank's about? I'll give you about? my quick five-minute overview. Food Bank was started in 1992, and the two founders were basically Dominic Perrottet's father, John, and Charles Scarf from the Reuben F. Scarf family. They saw Food Banking in 91 in America, and we're now part of the Global Food Bank Network. So we're in our 27th year. Interestingly enough, and the bittersweet stat is that Food Bank in New South Wales and the ACT last month celebrated our 150 millionth meal since we started. And they're huge numbers. So last year it was 21.4 million meals. This year it'll be about 22 and a half million meals. So, I mean, we supply a huge amount of product. 60% of it goes to Sydney and the environs. 35% to regional New South Wales and 5% to the ACT. So with all of that, a normal week out of this warehouse now, which we've been in to for four years, we purpose designed it and built it, is between 250 and 300 tonne of product a week. And that'll be 16,000 loaves of bread, about 100 to 120 tonne of fruit and veg, and then the rest is made up of amb ambient products. Okay, that's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, look, they're big numbers. Yeah. But unfortunately, we're still not satisfying all the need. Um, one of our challenges is the, getting the charities to have the capacity to grow at the same rate that we can, because we, we built this warehouse to cover our needs to 2025 and beyond. Yeah. So it's a 7,500 square metre warehouse, um, and it does have all the, the smarts in it. It's got 300 kilowatts of solar on the roof, We've got a thousand pallets of chillers and freezers, and it was estimated that our cost to run the chillers and freezers by year four would be $550,000, whereas last year it cost us $108,000 because of solar. Yeah, so that's yeah. a huge saving. Yeah, yeah. And so what does, what does Food Bank do to help people? So we've got these people in Sydney and right throughout New South Wales and ACT. Look, what, Food what Bank is like the pantry to the welfare sector we only supply charities. So charities have got to be registered with the Australian Charities Commission and the ATO, and then they can come and register with us. So being the pantry to the welfare sector, we're not frontline, but we help all of those charities. So groups like Vinnie's and the Salvos and a lot of the, the ethnic and church groups, um, we're Anglicare, we're really, really happy to help them. Yeah, excellent. And then because of the, the crisis that we're going through right now, we've got the drought, we've had floods in previous years, we're going through a tough time with the farmers as well. What kind of help does Food Bank give back there? Like in the last 12 months, we've distributed at no cost to the farmers and to the, the regional and drought stricken communities, 10,000 food hampers and 5,000 personal care hampers. And that had a, a cost to us of about a million dollars, which we've invested of our own money. And, you know, we've had some help from the state government in providing transport to those regional areas, and that's through John Barillara, the Deputy Premier, who also is the, the Minister for Regional New South Wales. And, and that makes a big difference. We don't clip the tape on the way through, so our transport bill is about $1.5 million a year. The government pays $1.1 million of that and the money they give us goes directly to paying for transport. So we yeah. don't take a handling fee or, yeah. or anything on the transport cost. Yeah, yeah, straight to, straight to the Yeah, the no, it, it's straight to, to the bottom line. Yeah. And the government, fortunately, have also 
announced in the recent budget that we're going to get $8 million over four years to provide school breakfast for 500 schools by the end of that four years. So with the schools we're providing it to now, plus those schools that were in part of this new group, um, we'll have about 650 schools in four years' time that wow. we're supplying breakfast to. Yeah, and um, why is that? Why has that happened, Terry? Why, why have you put together a, a breakfast program for, for look, school kids? I made the first application to the government in 2011-12 for funding. Governments are sometimes a tad slow to react, but you know we finally got it in 2019, and they understand because. There's about 700 disadvantaged schools in New South Wales um, and with the ICSEA score, which is the government's way of um, monitoring the schools, that's how we know. So we go to the, the more disadvantaged schools and that's how we pick them off the list. Mm -hmm. And about a third of that, um, or a little bit more, is in the, the bush, um, in regional New South Wales, some of it's in Sydney, um, and it's important that with our school breakfast program, it costs $6,000 a school a year okay. to provide 45 breakfasts, five days a week, 40 weeks of the year. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it's worked out. And, yeah. and between the education department and us, we agree what products are there. So there's no high energy, sort of high, high sugar, sugar type yeah. things or colours. So it's wheat bix and Vitabrits and wheat biscuits of, of any type and corn flakes and rice bubbles so it's those healthy things um, tin fruit in natural juice UHT milk both soy and cow's milk yeah. um, that you know the traditional Aussie spread Vegemite, um, <laughs> and, <it's> Vegemite. <laughs> and some jam yeah. and uh, all the school has to do is make sure they get some bread locally uh -huh. okay. um, and we supply that all over the, the countryside. Yeah, yeah. Um, and look, one of the schools at Campbellfield have said to us, the principal used to spend 95% of the time dealing with behavioural problems of kids, now she wouldn't spend an hour a week yeah. because they've got a school breakfast program. They've got full tummies, haven't they? They yeah, can focus look, better. Kids become disruptive and, and can't concentrate and all of those things. So once they've had a, something to eat, you know, even we supply things like baked beans and that. And then some of the schools are here today, they will do a shop and get fruit and veg, which they give to their community or to those families who they know are doing it a bit tough. Yeah. So they yeah. can get fruit and veg to tide them over the weekend and things like that. Yeah. And that works well from our point of view. It works well from the school's point of view. And it, it's the school community that, that benefits. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, fantastic. Um, so we've funding, Jerry. How, how does Food Bank actually get funded? Like you get obviously donations from companies of food product and, and all that, but you know, there's, okay, look, there's a lot what, more involved than that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. 40% of what we do, we give away. So most fruit and veg and most bread, we go through 16,000 loaves of bread a week, we give away. All the other products, we charge a handling fee for mm -hmm. to the charity. So I like and, the charity, like we've got people behind us now working from yeah, charities, haven't we? That yeah, and food. they, so from those sort of things that last year that averaged 39 cents a kilogram for everything we did. So we distributed 11.4 uh, million kilos last year. Yeah. So if you take that 11.4 million kilos multiplied by 39 cents, that was where the income we got. Yeah. Plus we're fundraising, yeah. we're actively out there fundraising, we're doing some face-to-face -face fundraising. We've got a, a major a direct mail appeal for the drought, we've got one for Christmas. and, and we changed about two and a half years ago from being a, an operationally driven business and made the shift to becoming a fundraising driven business mm -hmm. because we know that we, we, the charities have said to us there's 60 products that they want us to have in stock all the time. Yep. Currently we only have about 20 of those so wow. we, need to, we need to buy some of those. Yeah. So. so that fundraising helps to be able yeah, to do yeah, that? Yeah, so we can buy that, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So look, that gives you a, an overview of what we do and if anybody would like to know more, yeah. just go to www.foodbank.org.au and then you can geolocate, so you can find Food Bank New South Wales, click onto that yep. and that'll tell you how to donate, how to volunteer and all of those things. Because we've got 38 staff 
and about 300 to 350 volunteers every single week. Yeah, wow, that's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot, but we're... for this kind of operation, though, don't Look, we? we're a logistics business with a kind heart. Yeah. Even though we're a, we supply over 70% of all food relief in Australia, yeah. so we're a federated group, as I said earlier, like the federated states of Australia. Um, and it's important that we get some help from the government, but on the other hand, we run this as a business, so we can still survive if there was a change in government policy or something like that. Yeah. We're very happy to have the funding for school breakfast because to get that funded by somebody else is quite difficult. But anyway, it's all good and we're happy uh, to be able to tell you a bit more about yeah, the Food Bank story. And just one other question, Jerry. it's coming up to Christmas. Do you find like at Christmas time every year that it's, it's tougher for families to get fed and to be able to have that, you know, the traditional Christmas that we get to enjoy, do they tend to struggle with that? Look, we, we will build 15,000 Christmas hampers, which we, we have to pay for everything that's in it, but they're quality hampers, so they'll have Prumlo's leg ham and Big Sister Christmas cake and pudding and Foster Clark's custard and tin of sap cold tuna and some spaghetti and all of those things, and some lollies for kids and a couple of toys. We charge a hand, so we, it costs us about $35 and we recover that from the charity. Yeah. Now, look, there's, if there's a charity doing it really tough, we will give them the hampers, yeah. uh, but we'll we'll distribute somewhere more than 15,000 this year. Yeah, wow. Massive yeah, operation, that's... isn't it? Yeah, Trying it to is. feed, feed the world, you know, feed Australia pretty much, isn't it? Not yeah. only New South Wales, it's the whole of Australia. Isn't yeah, it? look, Food my bank? cohorts in the other states are doing exactly the same as what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, well, thanks very much. Okay, for your time, thanks, Jerry. Pep. Appreciate it. Okay, cheers. Thank you.